This new 3D printing project is going to be absolutely insane and it has to do with all of these 3D printed parts that are inside these boxes. Now I don't have a grand total as of yet of how many parts that I've printed so far that are inside these boxes that we're going to be using, but we're definitely going to be finding out as I get these all assembled together. But this is all part of the new Kickstarter campaign by Printable Accessories for this completely modular 3D printable enclosure. Now what's crazy about this is again, you can make this as big or as small as you like. I went with the, I think what's gonna be the one of the larger options for this that should fit just about pretty much any of my machines. And what's even crazier is they're gonna be optional design panels that you can customize it to make it your own. So I've printed a whole bunch of different parts that we're gonna now try and figure out how we can get these assembled. And just to give you a background of how many different printers I had involved with this, I was printing this on a fleet of the Bamboo Lab 3D printers, including the X1 Carbon, the P1P, the P1S, even the A1 Mini was involved here. I was also printing these over on the Prusa Mark IV, the Prusa XL, and I even had the Anchor Make M5 involved with this as well as the Creality K1 Max. And what's pretty cool about all these is there's minimal supports that are gonna be needed. Some of them don't require any supports and they can fit on a huge variety of different 3D printer build plates. And you'll see here, depending on how you orient them, I can print multiple at one time, or depending on the parts, I might completely load up the build plate like on the XL here, or I might just run off and print one individually across a bunch of different printers. And the first thing I'm gonna focus on assembling is the frame for this enclosure. Now, also depending on your printer and the settings that you're gonna be running with, uh, you can potentially print these without brims. However, for a lot of the parts, I ended up printing with brims just so that things didn't lift or curl on the edges. It was just a minimal, minimal amount of cleanup there to remove those. So thankfully that's nice and clean. Also, there is very little when it comes to actual supports that you're gonna need for some of these parts. As an example on this part here, there is this large overhang on the inside that you actually don't need to support. And if your printer is pretty good at bridging, which hopefully it is, you won't have to print any of supports with that. And it's super clean with how these printed. Also, there's just a tiny little support there on one of the corners. Thankfully, the folks over at Printable Accessories have also made some guides for printing all of these different parts and the recommendations when it comes to what areas to support versus not support. Also, a deburring tool is super helpful at a quick cleanup of any excess brims that you might have connected to your prints. Also check out all these connection parts that are gonna help me connect all of the different prints together. This was printed on the A1 Mini in one print job. I believe there are 56 of these that I printed. Zero supports needed for this. I just used a brim and had all the parts sitting pretty close together and it printed beautifully. Also all the frame parts that I ended up printing, I believe I printed at a point 2.8 layer height, uh, something like a 10 to 20% infill, I can't remember offhand. And again, very minimal supports were used for all these different prints. Now, when it comes to actually assembling the frame parts together, you could, if you really wanted to, super glue or 3D glue these parts together. Might not be the best adhesion. What's built directly into them is the support for eight by 32 nuts, as well as eight by 32 by a half inch screws that you can use to actually join all these parts together, which is exactly what I'll be using. Also, I'm sure I'll be using some 3D glue somewhere along the way here. And all of those little connection parts that I went off and printed on the A1 Mini are used to actually help the parts secure together. So as you just slot them together, there is a slight opening in between. You can insert that in between both of the parts to hold them in place and then use the nuts and screw to secure them in place or glue them or however you want to do that. The good news is uh, even if you didn't want to install the hardware, the, the you know, the nuts and bolts, honestly, you could probably get away with just the three printed connection joint it's gonna be a really solid connection to hold those all in place. Uh, the big benefit with the nuts and bolts is obviously it's gonna allow you to really easily uh, remove those and reconfigure this if you need be and have it be as extremely rigid as possible and not have any wiggle or potentially have those pins fall out. Or you could gloop or super glue those in place if you really wanted to. 
All right, so so here's the base. <laughs> here's the base of the enclosure. <laughs> This thing is so big and chonky. And here is our top of the enclosure. Everything will hopefully line up properly and I can get these all secured in place. So I've run into one small snag here, which is this corner piece. Thankfully, I've already reprinted it here or had a spare that I'd accidentally reprinted. Uh, this edge lifted and so I've got one that's now printed that's a little bit more flat and should fit properly flush there. So I just need to disconnect these parts and then reconnect everything and I should be able to sit that right back in place. All right, there we go. That is a much, much better fit. And actually, I don't even think I'm going to screw these in. I'm just gonna use the printed joints there to combine the top and the bottom panels all together. This way I can more easily disassemble this if I need to, and everything just kind of clicks into place. These are so well designed. It's such a cool printable project here. And here's the full enclosure frame assembled. Again, completely modular. I went for the big end here. I wanted to go as big as I possibly could with this so I could fit just about any of my 3D printers or potentially even multiple resin 3D printers in this. And where it gets really fun is you can then decide how you want to finish this off. You can do completely 3D printed side panels. You can put on acrylic panels. You can put on exhaust ports on the back of the printer or the sides. You can decide what you wanna do with the top, if you wanna mount LEDs in here, or if you wanna do some of the themed enclosure frames, which just so happens that I printed a bunch of these dwarven themed enclosure sides. I'm struggling to figure out how I wanna do this, but I think I'm gonna go with a combination of the acrylic side panels some of the dwarven panels here for maybe the door and one of the sides, maybe some of the accents, I don't know. And then I've also printed a bunch of the 3D printable pegboard options. I figured that'd be a little bit more practical as well for one of the sides. We'll see how this goes. Also, depending on the configuration that you're going with, there is a ton of 3D printed parts. So I would highly recommend maintaining some kind of a spreadsheet system there to keep track of what you've printed versus haven't printed. I just realized I'm trying to assemble the pegboard that I've uh, missed one of the prints. So I'm going off and printing that right now, which is a quick one hour print. All right, so I've got the two components for the pegboard assembled and I need to get them aligned and put together. But before I do that, I think I actually wanna put the backing piece. So this is a large backing piece that fits together with this. Uh, these bolt together here to secure them in place. I think I wanna actually secure this to the frame of the enclosure first. It might make it easier for me to insert the nuts and then uh, bolt everything together. We'll see. And for this next part, I need to actually mount the pegboard to the side panel here, where I'm gonna insert some nuts on the back side of that panel, and then the screws from the front side through some of those openings in a few strategic areas. I'm not gonna do every single opening there, I just need to do a handful of spots. So here's a great reason why I'm making this video for you all, is because I'm running through and testing all of these files before you get your hands on them. And I just found another issue while doing this installation. So they can make those changes before you ever run off and 3D print them. Basically, there's a hole opening in some of the frame parts so that I can screw in place some of the mounts for the door. However, on a few of the pieces, the, the hole opening is too small. So I'm having to drill those out. I've already sent off a note to them about making a change to that. So hopefully that'll all be done before you ever get your hands on them. And here's the fully assembled 3D printed enclosure. This turned out so good. I'm so happy with the results of how this turned out using all of these 3D printed parts to make this massive enclosure. It did take a little bit more time than I was expecting to get all of this assembled. So make sure you set aside at least a day to get all of your parts put together, but it was really fun and mostly a straightforward process of getting this all up and assembled. Now, I did end up using a whole bunch of screws in the nuts, but I also ended up using 3D Gloop to weld a bunch of the parts directly to the frame, like the door panels, as well as that big side mural. 
One of my favorite parts about this entire thing has to be the pegboard and how all this came together and just having the ability to have all this directly accessible on the side of this enclosure that can house one or two 3D printers depending on what I'm fitting inside there. Also, there is a spool holder option that you can mount on the side of the pegboard so that you can feed filament in from the top or from the back, depending on how you orient this thing. Now with my build, I wanted to show a few different varieties of what you could do with this. So on the very back, I ended up showing off this acrylic panel that's pre-cut for openings for different exhaust options or power supplies that can be fed in through the back of this. Now you could 3D print this entirely instead of using the acrylic panel. This was sent to me by the 3D printable accessories team to show off here with this. And then on the opposite side here of the pegboard, we have this massive mural from the Dwarven theme. I was so excited to get this printed and showing this off. Now I ended up using 3D Gloop to get this all assembled and then I just put in the outer frame of this and then glooped it directly to that side frame. And it's on there really nice and sturdy. This isn't going anywhere. And looking at the campaign for this project, I can see that they have a bunch of other theme options that will potentially unlock as the campaign progresses. And I also have these 3D printed doors sporting that same Dwarven theme on top of the 3D printed panels. There are also magnet options that you can install in the doors to help keep them secured and closed when you're printing. Along with the themed enclosures, there are also side accent pieces that you just kind of snap into place all around the perimeter of the enclosure. The total amount of printed parts that I ended up using for this build that you're seeing comes up to 393 printed parts. Now keep in mind, there are a whole bunch of these little tiny printed parts that are making up a whole bunch of the inserts and little peg pieces here that take up a big chunk of them. Now this is a sponsored video by the folks over at Printable Accessories for this campaign, which is live right now over on Kickstarter that you'll find links to down below. And yes, and I know what you're thinking, Thinking, this is a Kickstarter campaign for a set of digital files, and yes, that's correct. Well, as the campaign progresses and more people buy into it, more tiers and more files will become unlocked and available with the end of the campaign, which by the way, for most of the Kickstarter campaigns that I've backed for digital files, it usually takes around one month for you to receive those files after the campaign ends. So it's a pretty quick turnaround compared to the other typical things that you might see on Kickstarter where it takes a year plus for those things to actually get in your hands. This is a really quick turnaround. And I also want to say a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your support of me making content like this here. Over on the interwebs, if you're interested in things like my 3D printer settings, you can find those in my Patreon. And in the comments down below, let me know what you think about this modular 3D printable enclosure that you can make as big or as small as you need, as well as customize it to make it your own versus one of those other boring enclosures that are out there. And thanks so much for watching, y'all. I'll see you next time. Do any of you remember this space? Well, yeah, I ended up bringing a bunch of the parts back home with me so that I can work on this project late into the evening so I can have the video ready for you with the launch of this campaign. Also, side note, I kind of miss this backdrop. I might need to recreate something like this over at my studio.